Hey, thanks for joining us today. I believe God has a word for you that's gonna touch your life today, right now. So grab your pens, grab your paper, and get ready to receive a life-changing word. Just take a minute to bask in his presence from your homes, from wherever you're watching, local, near, far away, wherever you are, just take a minute to worship the Lord. We praise God to give thanks. We worship God to give thanks. We praise with our hearts through our mouth when we know not what to pray for. We just speak praises to the Lord and give thanks. It don't have to be fancy. It just has to be grateful and thankful. How many knows God is good? He is good. We celebrated Easter last week. If he's good, just put something in the chat to let us know that you know he's good. Come on, somebody. He's good and worthy of our praise. He's good in times of sickness, and he's good in times of health. He's the best marriage you ever had. He'll be with you till death do you part, and then some. Eternity. He's the best marriage you ever had. I want to give you my passage before you're seated this morning. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6 and look at verses 13 through 18. Once you have it, just type amen in the chat. Double your neighbor, tell him amen once you have it. It's important to find God's word. Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 says, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. You know, everybody's got some gopher wood in their garages. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Pitch is like an asphalt. No pitch, no floaty, no no leak proof. God knew what he was doing when he gave the details to Noah. Cover it inside and outside with pitch. It's like an asphalt. It makes it not flammable. It makes it waterproof. It's good. God is good, and he knows what he's doing. Thank God for that. Verse 15, and this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. Before I move on, let's talk about a cubit. I know you all using cubits to measure your stuff at Lowe's, but in case you don't know what a cubit is, it's the, it's the rough estimation of the elbow to the top of the middle finger. And we all have different arms lengths. So it's approximately 17 to 21 inches is one cubit. And it says, and this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits and you shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark in its side and you shall make it with lower second and third decks or floors my my what a project for Noah and behold verse 17 I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy it from heaven under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I, everybody say, I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark. You, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. My subject this morning is the finer things. The finer things. And before you're seated, I just want to Ask God to touch this word. Lord, we come to you right now wholeheartedly. We pray for your anointing on this word to come from me, that you may speak through me and get it right, God, and that people may receive your word into their hearts and leave today better than they were yesterday. We ask all this in Jesus' name. As you're seated, elbow your neighbor and tell them, take note, it's in the details. Take note, it's in the details. We want to thank you for your continued faithfulness to One Seed Church through your giving and tithes. If you want to give today, you can go to oneseedchurch.org slash giving. If you could check in with us online, so many of you already do that. And what a difference it makes to reach the world. You know, we do have people for a small church. We got people in other countries watching right now. And that's pretty awesome. We're touching lives with God's word all over the world. Share the live stream experience out. If you think this message may bless someone that is far from God, we want you to draw them closer through God's word. So share the live experience. And if you're new with us today, or even if you're not 
new with us and you've been with us, put your name in the chat and say where you're from and so people can get to know you already just through the chat. How cool is that? The finer things. The finer things. I think when we think of the finer things in life, we think of lifestyles of the rich and famous, caviar dreams, unless you've had that stuff and it's nasty. Who wants to eat those fish eggs? No one, but it looks pretty. The finer things, we think of nice clothes, nice house, nice ride, jewelry, all the bling bling of the world, the finer things, the nice, the, the, the best steak on the menu, the best hats, the best shoes, the best. We think of the nice things, the special things in life, the ring on your finger. I don't know about y'all, but when I proposed to my wife at 24 Hour Fitness in 2006, it was the proposal, I almost said seven, that's when we were already married, people. My wife's over there. I had to make sure I get that right. But if I hadn't gave her a ring and I'm just like, hey, you want to get married? You know, I'm sure she would have said yes, of course. But the ring made it special because it was fine. It was like a three-quarter diamond. Is that right? Three-quarter carat diamond. I know because the lady was telling me, and I didn't know anything about diamonds until this lady told me it's three quarter carat. And she said, she said, you can get this cheaper because it's got this little blemish that no one can see with the naked eye, except you have this magnoscope, mag, magnifying microscope. And I'm like, well, nobody can see that. So I'm going to get the bigger rock with the blemish because I can save a little money. And also it'll be finer than the smaller rock. You know, that's what I thought. Obviously, the size of the ring doesn't matter. It's the gesture behind it. But it was like, uh, you know, so many carats of white gold. And uh, by the way, here's mine. It's a J.C. Penny special. I think it was $99, and I've already lost it once. This is the replacement. And I'm good with that because I don't, I don't like jewelry. I don't wear jewelry very often. The only time I wear a watch is when I'm preaching because it looks good. It's not really because I need to tell the time. Well, sometimes... But anyway, if I had not given my wife a ring to gesture my love to her, you know, it wouldn't have been the same. It, it mattered in the sense that it represented the depth of my love. It didn't matter in the sense of the material aspect of how much it cost and how big the diamond was and all those things. It could have been a rubber band that I made from scratch. It could have been something like my kids made from scratch. It's the finer thing because, because it meant something special. It was made with care. And so when I had proposed, if I hadn't gave her a ring, it would have lacked the finer things of the engagement. It would have not been represented by the finer things of the depth of love I had in my heart. It's kind of like when we got married and we said, I do. What did we say I do too? We said I do to some vows. And without the vows, the I do doesn't really mean anything. It's like I do, I do to what? Whatever, no. I do to these vows as I stand before God. These are the vows I'm committing to, to my wife, to my spouse. The vows mattered the details mattered and if we took out the vows and we took out the rings and we took out all the details well we'd be left with confusion because we wouldn't be know, knowing what was going on is this a wedding what is this is this a proposal what is this and this is kind of like how we run through life it's in a hurry and when you're in a hurry it takes patience to catch the details of a conversation oh y'all know what i'm saying you know you have that friend that texts you right in the face. They're texting somebody right when you're telling them you're pouring out your heart and you're telling them your life story and they're texting somebody else giving the, uh-huh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, they're not hearing what you're saying. You know, it's the nature of how we do. And when you're in a rush at the store, you need a list, else you might forget the details. See, we're in a hurry, so we got to have a spreadsheet. You got to have a list to remember the details because without the details, we don't even know what to do with ourselves. And when you encounter people, if you rush through what you're going to say next or you're distracted, you're going to miss the details of what they're saying to you. The details matter. Details turn coal into diamonds, rookies into pros, and novices into experts. Details do that. We wouldn't want a doctor performing a surgery on us if he wasn't familiar with the details of the procedure. Well, you know, I'll just cut them open and see what I find. Who would, who would want that? 
I'll just cut them open and see what I find. No, you want a doctor who's familiar with the details of the procedure because if he doesn't know the details, he's not going to get it right. Our walk with God is the same. There's a book called the Bible that we have access to that has details and they matter. And our walk with God is built upon the details of his word. This is how we know where we are where we are going, and how we get there. The finer things of God are in the details. If you want to write that down, it's good because the finer things of God are in the details. We went, has anybody been to the ark in Kentucky, the replica, the life-size full recreation of the ark according to the scripture? Has anybody been there? Chloe's been there? No, Lonnie? No? Cameron? Cameron goes there every weekend. So they got the ark. If you've been, on, if you've been to the ark in Kentucky, just shout a yes or something in the chat. There is a full replica ark in Kentucky. You can go there. It's about five hours from St. Louis. It's not a bad drive. It's cool. You stay at a Hampton Inn. You go to the aquarium nearby, and you got yourself a nice little extended weekend in God's, God's historical artifacts. And this ark It's not just a big old boat. It's got details. And when you see it in person, obviously we're trying to recreate it as close as possible. But if you can imagine the detail, when you see this thing, you realize, wow, God had a plan and it's specific. And without the specificity, I don't know if that's a word, it wouldn't have been the same. It mattered. God's word has details. This boat had floors to it. It had nice woodwork. I didn't know Noah was so crafty with the crown molding. Just kidding. It didn't have crown molding, but it was nice. It had animal cages, and it had all these interpretive things that we don't know for sure if it was really there, but the general measurements of it were probably pretty accurate because we have that in detail in God's word. We know how long 300 cubits is in details, 50 cubits wide in details, 30 cubits high in details, put the window over here, put the decks here, on and on and on. The details are what made the ark the ark. So it's so cool. If you haven't been there, I encourage you to go check it out. Um, What's it called? Ark Encounter. Yeah. I just call it the ark, but if you want to Google that, it's called the ark encounter. So the Bible is full of prophetic details because again, and you're going to leave here going, man, if I heard anything today, I heard the word details. We're going to preach that into your core to where you can't help but talk about it later. See, the prophecies of the scripture had to be detailed to hold value. If they were vague, if they weren't specific, they wouldn't have held any value when they came to pass. Just like there were so many prophecies in the Bible, hundreds and hundreds, dozens alone just on the Messiah coming, you know, that Jesus would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, that that Peter would deny him three times. Jesus spoke it right to him before it happened, that he would deny him three times, that a Roman soldier would pierce the Christ on the cross with a spear in his side, that his legs would not be broken though it was tradition to break the prisoner's legs on the cross so that he would suffocate they knew that Christ was going to die sooner so they decided not to break his legs which was weird but prophecy said that the Messiah the Lamb of God his legs would not be broken those details made a difference he'd be given vinegar to drink Mm, sounds good when you're thirsty but it's specific and it's specific for a reason it's specific for a reason The details of those prophecies produced the credibility of Christ when they came to pass. Otherwise, we could have had an imposter. That's how we know who was the real thing. And thank God for that. And broad assumptions in anything we do in life will produce a generic result. No specifics, no way to narrow the focus. We preach it hard at church. We have, we have very specific way we do things because we are uniquely defining the identity of this church, one seed church. We don't want to look like everybody else. We want to be different. We want to show God in a way that people are not used to seeing. It's like a car. I mean, how many have ever bought a car before? Or maybe you're a teenager and you're getting ready to buy that first car and you know you got to get them Kmart rims that snap on. And I know they're not real rims, little Jeffy, but they snap on and they look like chrome even though they're plastic. And let me just prophetically speak to you that those bad boys are going to pop off your 240SX when you're racing your friends when you're 16 years old because they're not real rims, they're plastic snap-ons. But 
the details matter. You want, you want the nice shiny ones or maybe you're buying a new car from a dealer and oh man, there's just like so many details for you to customize the order of what you want. You don't go to the dealer and say, I just want a car. Some of you do and that's great. But most of us are a little more, you know, we're, 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 privileged, we're, we're blessed to get to go buy what we want. So we're going to custom order that thing. We're going to say, what well, we need V8. What do I want? Diesel? How many liters do I want? Do I want do I want gas? Do I, do I want regular gasoline? Do I want diesel? Do I want V8, V6, V4? Do I want dual overhead cams if they still make those? Do I want four wheel drive? Do I want two wheel drive? Do I want Arctic white? Do I want do I want uh, blue? Do I want do I want a pickup truck? Do I want extended cab? Do I want super crew? Do I want do I want a cab in the back? Do I want a sports car? Do I want a two seater? Do I want trunk space? Do I want cargo space? I got four kids and I need to know: Can I fit all them their luggage when we go on a trip? We got to buy the extended version of that Yukon. It's a mess because we got so many kids. Because the one that's 18 and shorter, you know, the regular Yukon, it won't do. See, the details matter and make the difference of what we buy. If you didn't have any details in mind, you probably wouldn't go there to buy something. But you have something in mind. Kind of like, you know, like my mom. I don't know if y'all remember the 300ZX. Now I'm really dating myself. But they put out the reissue of the three, not the 350. Let's go back to early 90s. The 300ZX was redone, reissued with the T-tops. It had, a, it had like the Ferrari kind of front end. And it was just a six-cylinder, but nobody, th- nobody knew that. They thought it was fast. Maybe it had the turbo. We didn't. And my mom, she had the pearl yellow. You want to talk about specific, unique detail. You know how many friends said, you got a yellow car? And I said, no, it's not mustard yellow or yellow yellow. It's pearl yellow. And it's different. It's pearl yellow. And in all honesty, the pearl yellow was uh, sharp looking once you got used to it. But it wasn't what people thought was just yellow. And I had to tell them, no, it's pearl yellow. And man, I used to think if I could just drive that car, I'd be so cool when I was 16. And it didn't work out. But go check it out. Go, go Google pearl yellow 300ZX on Google. And it, that's what we had. That's what my mom drove. She was pretty fly for a mom, wasn't she? driving around the T-tops. That's the first time I listened to Steve Ray Vaughan. My dad, now that I'm going to totally digress for a minute, my dad was, my dad was driving on the freeway with me listening to The Houses Are Rockin' by Stevie Ray Vaughan cassette, and I'm, I'm about 13 sitting in the car going, what is this mess? And it turned out to be my favorite guitar player of all time later in life. See, the details make the memory. The memory what makes it last because I remember the details of the situation. I remember the details of what made it unique. The finer things of God are in the details. If there was no details about how Jesus was to come, how he was to die, and how he was to rise again, and how he was to fulfill the plan of redemption for mankind through the regeneration process, we would not know what to look for. And what's crazy is some people knew how he was to come, and when he came at that time, they still missed it because they weren't paying attention to the details. They expected the lion, and he was the lion in the form of a lamb. And so they thought he was to reign as king right then, and they weren't listening to God's word because they were were busy laughing all the way back in the days of the garden. They were busy laughing at Noah when the flood was to come. They were not focused on the details, and so they were missing the boat. No pun intended. It matters. It matters even more now, I think, because we're in a world full of data, and there is data, real news, fake news, 15 million different types of faiths in Christianity, so many, so many cuts and slices of one thing that people don't know where to go, and all the details vary, so you have to go back to the source, and that's God's word, and start there, and anytime you want to build a a team, a church, an organization, any type of thing that involves people, you're going to run into something that they call in the corporate world, the 80-20 principle. If you've heard of it, just, just say, yes, Lord, I've heard of it, 80-20. And maybe you can type out if you're the 20 or you're the 80. But the 80-20 principle is the theory, and it's fairly accurate, and it's not a negative or a positive. It's just the way of people working together, that 20% of the, of the group does 80% of the output. of the group is in a different mindset than 80% of the output. And this is not because one is better than another or something like that. It's just the nature of people in position in all these things. 
That 20% has a focus that's a little different on the objectives, on the mission than the other 80%, which are still just kind of figuring things out. Maybe they're following along because they're, they're not there yet. And eventually they may work into the 20%, but that's generally a revolving number of any, of any successful, it's like a baseball team. You know, you've got your team and then you've got your slugger. You've got, you've got your special hitter who's going to knock it out. You've got your special pitcher. You've got those key people that drive the other 80% to lead that team. And that's a good thing. But what if Noah was daydreaming when God specified the ark dimensions? What if he wasn't in that 20% right then and he went and built a sea ray open bow or a sea ray 40 foot cruiser or a sea ray fly bridge? Oh yeah, now we're talking, that would be so cool, you know, like, wow, I wouldn't want to pay for the gas for that thing. But man, that would be so cool to have. If y'all don't know boat talk, those are some really nice Boats, but they wouldn't have accommodated what G- what God said to build because God specified specifically how the ark was to be built because it was meant to do a job. And in order to do the job correctly, it had to be built a certain way. You couldn't put too many animals in a sea ray, even in the big ones. You could fit some animals, but not as enough. Not not enough that God has specified to replenish the world. Plus, Noah and all his kids and their wives and all these things. What if he had built just a cruiser? What if he had built Oh, man, what if you built like a tritune, open tritune fishing boat when God said, build me an ark because Noah wasn't paying attention to the details of what God said. Sometimes, though, it's cool doesn't mean it's purposeful, and often they contradict. We have to pay attention to how God told us to do it. God needs you to pay attention. Touch your neighbor, tell him God needs you to pay attention. When we don't, God will allow for seasons to flood our life, to refocus our attention on him. We're in a season like that now. We don't believe God strikes fear. We don't believe he strikes down, you know, hell on earth and does all these things. But we do believe he draws good from the season and he will allow things to pass if that's what it needs to save his people. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father does not chasten? God loves you so much, he needs to get your attention so you catch the details of his word. Because if you miss the details, you miss the boat. Anytime you go from steps A to B, you got to have a path. How do I get to B? There's a path. The detail is in the blueprint. If I don't know where to follow, how do I find my path? But I believe what's cool about the 80-20 principle and what, what, what is cool about God is that Jesus was a rule breaker to the world, but a savior to those who believed and followed. And I believe that God's church can be a 100-100 principle church, not an 80-20 principle church. I believe 1C church can be 100-100, that 100% of these involved can give 100% output, and we're going to see God magnified in a way we never have. So we need you. We need you to go all in. God needs you and desires you go all in. We can break it because we got a rule breaker in Jesus we can break the traditions and bring forth the revelations. We do things at one seed, very specific. You can ask any of our team leads. It's not a free-for-all. It's not a, it's not a, a hoot nanny or whatever you call it. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's organized because it matters. Otherwise, it'd be chaos. I don't know if you've seen what we do before and after church, but it's, 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 it's a grind and it's fast and people know what they're doing and it's organized and that's how we get it done efficiently in the time we have at the theater where we normally meet. If there was no structure, no detail to how it's done, when there's a problem, you can't go fix it because it's lost in a black hole of confusion. That's why details matter. Details are the difference between coal and a diamond. If you want to go from from a coal to a diamond, you've heard the sermon, pressure, pressure brings details. Pressure makes you forced to pay attention to details, and that's what hones you into a diamond. It's a real thing. Details create preparation. Preparation reveals detail. Preparation defeats anxiety and panic because you're prepared. When you're prepared, you know what to expect. Why? Because you're ready for the details. Last week, we did church for Easter, 
and it was a little different than normal. And, and my comfort level was different because I didn't know the normal details. When we started here the, at home, the details at first were different. So what we did is we tried to replicate everything we were used to in our muscle memory so that the entire experience was what we were used to. The details were the same, so we knew the rhythm. We knew what to expect, and we were prepared. And sometimes it's good to get thrown an audible by God to shake your preparation, to show that you need to adjust in the moment, and that's okay too. But preparation will seize anxiety and fear. And lack of preparation, which is what I'm saying, is lack of detail-driven attention to what's about to pass will create a panic in whatever you attempt to do in your life. You have to have a plan, you have to know your purpose, and you have to go after it and take note to the detail through preparation. It's how we hear God's voice. How do I hear God's voice? I have to focus. Focus is how I hear better because distraction causes me not to hear somebody right when they're talking in my face because they're texting somebody or I'm texting somebody. You know, we talked about that. Focus causes us to hear God's word and God's word, God's voice is the details we have to live our life by. When we adhere to God's voice broadly, he'll begin to speak in more detail in your life. I'm sure some of you can look back right now and see where you started in this walk with God and where you are now. Just imagine where he's going to take you another year from now. See, he's progressing your faith in a way you didn't ever know he could do. He's giving you revelation by revelation, bit by bit, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, little bit here, little bit there. Collectively, God is revealing something to you today, tomorrow, and as long as you're faithful, he will keep on doing that and you're seeing growth in your life that's because you're listening for God to show you more and as we grow we learn to flow and the rhythm according to the finer things of God will be spoken to us louder we'll hear it louder the more I stay in God's word the louder I can hear his voice when I dabble from the word he feels silent to me he feels like he's not there and he's never really moving he's just I'm not hearing you see the details matter The finer things of God are in the details. When my first baby was born, Chloe Michelle, who's singing worship with us today, when she was a baby, there wasn't too many things to remember. Though very important, the details were just, you know, feed them, change their diaper, let them sleep, burp them, clean up their throw up. And when it's that age, it's not even a thing. It don't even stink that bad. I mean, it's gross if, it's, if I'm holding your kid and your kid throws up on me, I might gag or something. But when it's my own kid, it's cute, you know? Some of y'all are like, you're crazy. I don't like any type of throw up. But let me tell you, until your kids get a little older, that throw up, it's, it gets worse. But as she's gotten older, the details have gotten bigger, more. Now it's like she's 10 and there's like, well, how do I want to wear my hair today? And what am I going to do with my day? And what lessons do, does mom and dad have to take me this week? And she's even got her own calendar. It's so cute. I see her put one seat church events on her calendar or like dad's birthday on her calendar. And she's just organizing the details of her own little world. And that's so cool. I didn't even know she was doing that. She's paying attention to these things. It's like, what clothes are in style now, mom? What clothes can you get me? These are, I've outgrown. These are too short. I need some, uh, these are too tight. Yeah, let me tell you about that, girls. Too tight. We want some, we want some, some looser fitting clothes. On, on our daughters and, and amen to that. And, and so now there's like all these details and that thank God I have my wife because I can't remember all the details and my daughter has to get us together and get me together and say, this is what I need, dad. So between her and her mom, even though the list is getting longer, they're always paying attention to get it right. The details may change with your walk with God, but as long as you stay connected in God's word, your focus will be able to handle the details of what he wants to give you. We're just like Noah. God has provided an ark for us and our families through the cross. He gave us a way through the Red Sea also. Moses through the Red Sea, through the cross. He gave us an ark like Noah through the cross. He gave us a promise like Abraham through the cross. He gave us the ability to become heirs of righteousness like Abraham through the cross. But you wouldn't know what the cross stands for unless you catch the details of God's word. 
Learning to yield to the Spirit of God in your life and moving according to the Spirit. Learning to yield like in a car takes details of understanding, feeling God's presence, and when to let Him flow when He's trying to flow, when the Spirit is trying to flow. We have to learn to yield. We have to learn to discern. The Bible says, try the spirits that they are up, to discern if they are of God or not. See, there's, there's, there's other types of spirit in this world. There's bad spirits. We're in a spiritual world. We're just living in it. What you see is not the end all be all. What you see is just the result of what's happening of what you don't see. And the Bible says, try the spirits. So you have to know when I'm presented with a certain opportunity, am I discerning the spirits? Is this of God or is this of the world? Is this of myself? Is this of the enemy? Try the spirits that you may know if they're of God or not. It's in the details. Sometimes God will speak something to you in a whisper. You got to get it really quiet to catch it. Other times God will reveal something to you in a praise. It can be a loud room full of worship and praise. Sometimes you'll be driving in a car and the, and the revelation will go off. God will give you details in all kinds of scenarios as long as you keep focus on him and seek him for focus. When you start to drift, God, bring me back to where I need to be. Bring back my focus to where I need to be. Help me take the light off myself and shine my light on you because I came to glorify and magnify you, not myself. And when I take the light off my lamp, off myself, off my problems, off, off the things I'm not happy with and I remember where to shine my light, my world will get better because I'll start remembering the details of your promise. If y'all could stand with me this Sunday morning. Remember when Jesus came, he did many miracles signs and wonders and though it blessed those he touched that was not his mission his mission was to show that he was the way the truth and the life the resurrection and that he could do things in the spirit that could only be revealed by them seeing a physical miracle so that they could have the revelation remember he said which is greater i say rise up take your bed and walk or your sins be forgiven. You see, the greater was the thing you couldn't see. He said, "If you, th those who have eyes to hear and, and, and uh, eyes to see and ears to hear, let them listen to let it root." He's talking about your spiritual eyes and ears because you have to look past what's on the surface and look deeper into God's word and see that He's trying to get you to hear through your spirit. And God can't speak to He who doesn't hear in their spirit it's a spiritual world we're just living in it god we come to you right now in your mighty name and we are thankful that no matter what this week brought we can bring it before you right now from our couches from our from our homes from our from our carpets wherever we're standing right now absorbing your word god that we know you will give an increase and we can, we can leave the pain, we can leave the stress, we can leave at the altar what they said to me this week, what they said that caused me to get in a fight with my spouse. It had nothing to do with us, but the devil is a liar and he's gonna try to penetrate my household if I let him and, let him, and I'm not having it, God, and I can leave that all here because I know the devil's games and I know that he loses in the end, that there is only one victory and that's in you, Christ Jesus. You have already won one death has already been defeated and no matter how sick i get or how many bad things happen that the world sees right now i know that in the end you shall reign victorious because your word shall never return void so god have your way keep us at comfort keep us prepared help us pay attention to the details as i walk to grow closer god help me see the scriptures for the way you have written them and let not man skew the word from my heart god let me know so i can see the revelation you'd have me to have so i can give it to somebody else if the house of god can say right now in jesus name amen Hey, thanks again for joining us for today's message. I pray God spoke to your heart directly and left you with a word that's leaving you blessed and encouraged throughout this upcoming week. If you'd like to partner financially with us, you can go to 1cchurch.org giving.